Hello everyone, I'm back again with another God Guide, and today we're going over my favorite guardian in the game, Ares. Now Ares has a ton of damage potential. He has a lot of damage in his kit from his abilities, and because of that, he can kind of carry a game. Um, this is definitely a guardian that you would not mind getting a couple kills early with, because if you get behind with Ares, you're pretty useless throughout the rest of the game because all Ares really brings to the table is damage and if you're behind your damage is not gonna be that great and no one's scared of Ares from behind but with that he does have damage and because he has damage he is very scary early if you hit by three chains and then he hits you with searing flesh you're not gonna be feeling very good you need to get out of there because Ares hurts a lot and I'm going to keep emphasizing that Ares hurts. I'm sure anyone that's played against Ares already knows that. We already know how annoying he is, especially in Arena. And that's also kind of the main reason why he's also my favorite Guardian. So, we're going to take a look at the build real quick. Um, as far as star items go, you can either go Mark of the Vanguard or uh, Watcher's Gift. I personally like Watcher's Gift. I think the benefits of Watcher's Gift is a little bit better than... Uh, Mark of the Vanguard, but you do have to be pretty close to the minions to uh, clear the wave or attempt to clear the wave because there is uh, wave clear is not very good. And you're also going to have to be pretty close to the minions to do damage to them, which could also be the minions will probably be close to you attacking you. So Mark of the Vanguard will be very good for mitigating some of that damage. Just depends how you're planning on playing Ares. I mean, either one is fine. I personally like Watch Your Skiff, but. Like I said, can't go wrong with either one. Then, of course, you're playing support. Have to have Hog. There's really no other thing to say about Man of the Guts. You just need other support. Then, as far as potions go, I like to get uh, four health potions and four multi potions. Since you'll probably get, be getting poked a decent bit as Ares. And you can pop both of these to regen health, which I find very helpful. But you can also do 4 health potions, 4 mana potions if you really want to. I just prefer the multi potions. Now as far as regular build goes, uh, there's no specific way to... I don't have these items in any specific order. Except for these very first three. Boots, Sovereignty, and Heartward. These are it's pretty much what you're going to build every time unless they have some kind of crazy team lineup. It's like 5 magical, physical, something crazy like that. But that really should not happen very often. Um, as far as boots go, you can really go with any of the boots if you want to. It just depends on how you're planning on playing Ares. Uh, Traveler shoes will be the safest option in my opinion. But if you're wanting to go with a much more aggressive Ares, you can definitely go with the uh, cooldown or power boots. Either one of those fine. I wouldn't really go with um, reinforced grease. I don't think they're really that worth it on Ares. But any of the other three are completely fine. Of course, Sovereignty, of course, Heartward. Standard for any support. It's going to give you some good defense. And it's going to give your teammates some extra defense. And some regeneration. So, those are going to be your three main items. And after that, well, it just depends on what the enemy team has. So, we're going to look at a couple of the good, uh, more good, some of the good uh, damage items on Ares. Sorry, I'm just stuttering for some reason. It's probably also because it's almost 5 o'clock in the morning when I'm doing this. Um, if you're looking for some extra damage, your best bet would to be to get a uh, Void Stone. Void Stone was going to give you, um, it's going to give that penetration. It's also going to give you some magical defense, which will be good. It's going to give you some power. And it's also going to reduce the enemy's protections. So if you got a pretty good um, magical team, this will also help them. But just make sure that only one person on your team has Void Stone. Because uh, the passives on Void Stone does not stack. And you'll just be really wasting an item slot <laughs> if you have two Void Stones. Another pretty good um, damaging item will be Mystical Mill. This also works greatly with this passive, which I'll go over in a minute when I get to his abilities. And it's also just going to... They're just going to take damage when they're close to you. It's going to give you a good bit of health. It's going to give you a good bit of physical protection. It's a pretty good item. The only downside of this item is it's pretty expensive. 
and you're not always going to have that much gold as a support. But if you do find yourself with some extra gold, Mr. Camille is definitely a very good item on Ares. It's definitely one of probably the better, if not one of the best uh, physical items for Ares. Then we got Ring Blade. Ares has no movement, no uh, mobility skills. He's very slow. So, um, Ring Blade will be very good for helping out, I guess, enemies that have a bunch of slows, like Nemesis, Outwash, anyone like that. Plus, extra cooldown reduction. Jerry's not gonna complain about. And then we got the odd choice here. We got Spear of the Magus. Now the passive on Spear of the Magus is great with um, his chains. Because you're gonna play three chains if you hit all three of them. And that's gonna You're just gonna get the full benefit out of uh, Spear of the Magus here. Now, once again, just like Voidstone, do not have multiple Spear of the Magus on your team because the passives on Spear of the Magus does not stack. It would be kind of wasting another item slot if, say, like your mid is playing Anubis or something and that has Spear of the Magus. Then you should not be building Spear of the Magus. Which, most of the time, you're not going to be building Spear of the Magus on Ares. But, you know, it's, it's not bad on Ares. So, next we're going to go to the more important items, the more defensive items for Ares. Um, since Magi's got nerfed, I think Spirit Robes is probably the better option now. And it's probably what I'll be running more of than Magi's Blessing. Plus, um, it's gonna give you some the more it's gonna give you more protections than Magi's would have. You're gonna get extra you're gonna get some extra tankiness if you get stunned or if you get hit by any CC. And it's also gonna give you some cooldown reduction. Which, once again, just like Wing Blade, Ares wants some cooldown reduction. He likes cooldown reduction. Uh, the only downside to um Spirit Robes is that it does not give you any health. That's kind of a really bad downside. And that was kind of the one really good thing about Magi's Blessing was that it gave you, I think it gave you like 300 health or something like that, plus the bubble. But Spirit Robes still a very good item. Um, Pestilence is another good item. This will probably be your, if you were looking for some more magical protection, this would be a good choice if the enemy team has a bunch of healing on their team. They have like a raw hell, Aphrodite especially, even Hercules, Savannah's, anyone like that. Uh, Pestilence is a good choice. Plus you'll also get some damage because it's an aura. And we'll talk about that when we get to the passives once again. Um, the Guardian Mail and Hydenemia lines are good against hunters. Um, the Guardian Mail is also good against just basic attack heavy gods like Bacchus or, or Kali, gods like that. Um, the Guardian Mail is going to apply a slow, a movement speed slow, and a attack speed slow to um, to anyone that hits you with the basic attack. Now it's a percentage chance, so it's not going to happen every time, but there's a percent chance that when they hit you with basic attack, they're going to be slowed and their attack speed is going to be slowed. Which is very, very good. And then we got Heavy Nemia Line, where it's going to return damage to them. Based on the amount of damage they hit that you take from their basic attacks, which is also a very powerful item, especially against hunters, because they're just going to be critting for like 700 damage because hunters are overpowered. So these are going to be your main items that you'll probably want to stick to. You definitely want to get these three, and then after that, just kind of depends on what you want. All these items are definitely good. Then we're going to take a look at Actus. Of course, you'll want hand the guys three. You're going to need it to um, secure objectives like Fire Giant and Gold Fury. They're still very important in the game. And you're going to be the best option for doing it. Although, Ares is definitely not the best at securing objectives. He does not have a very good way to get in there to steal it. But that can also be kind of fixed with Blink. Uh, you're going to have to be kind of sneaky with it, especially if they know you have Blink. because. If they know you're out blink, they'll probably just run out there and try to poke you some so you can't blink in. But other than that, blink is still a very good option for Ares because he has no mobility. Um, he's a very slow god. You can blink in. You can hit that ulti. And it's it's probably the best. This is what I usually like to build on Ares along with Hand of the Gods, of course, and Conquest. Um, these other items are still very good in certain situations, though. Once again, if they have a bunch of healing, you get a uh, weakening curse. And if you're just 
if you just feel that your team is having a hard time surviving and you get shield of absorption, it'll make them tankier. These two are both very good options, but I think the first two are your best options in general. These two are just in very specific situations that you should probably get these on Ares at least. So with the build down, we're going to take a look at his abilities. So we, first off, we got Blessed Presence. This is his passive. And for every aura item that you have, like, you'll at least have Sovereignty and Heartward. They both have auras on them. You're going to get an additional 30 power from them. So that's at least 60 power just from a straight up defensive item. Which is another reason why um, Mystical Mill is a very powerful item on Ares. Because you'll be chaining them. You're going to get the extra damage from Mystical Mill because it has an aura on it. You're going to be hitting them with the shackles. You're going to be searing flesh them. They're going to be taking a bunch of damage, and plus the extra damage just from being close to you from Mystical Mill. That's why Mystical Mill is a very powerful item on Ares. It's just really expensive, and you're not always going to have enough gold to be able to get it. But it's also going to affect items like Pestilence, stuff like that. Anything with an aura on it, it's going to be good. This is also why Voidstone is also a very good item on Ares also. So first off, we got Shackle. This is his chains, and this is a very, very powerful ability. Um, Ares is going to shoot out a chain. Um, if it hit its enemy god, you can throw out another one. And if you hit enemy god with a second one, you have one more chain that you can throw out. So you can have a maximum of three chains. And it also puts a slow on them, depending on how many chains you got on them. And it also is going to do... Um, a dot on them. Let's go put a dot on them. But the biggest thing about this ability is that it cripples enemies. So if you hit them with a the chain, and if it's someone like Sir Kit, they're not going to go anywhere. They're going to have to use beads to uh, lose the cripple so they can get away from you. And you're going to easily, if you build a little bit of damage on Ares, you can kill someone like Sir Kit with all three shackles of Searing Flesh with 100% health. You'll just drop all their health. You have like mystical mail and stuff like that. They're just straight up be dead. Shackles does a lot of damage. It's a very powerful ability. Um, it's kind of it does hurt minions, but it's not very good for killing minions because if you hit the minions, you don't get to throw extra chains up. But one thing you can do with shackles, um, if the enemy is kind of staying close to the minion wave, you can throw out the chains across the minions to hit the enemy god and you can try to do it as many times as you can although if they're smart they're kind of realize what you're doing and will not let you do that to them but it works well that's gonna be the best way to deal damage to minions with shackle because this is not a very good ability for clean away then we got bolster defenses um, this is going to give you and your teammates extra protections. It's also going to give you some CC reduction, which is very good. Um, you get an extra bonus if you use this while you have while you have someone chained, which is also cool. And that's about it for bolster defenses. There's not much there for bolster defenses. And then we got searing flesh. Searing flesh, um, you'll shoot out some flames from your shield. It's not a very doesn't have a very long range on it, but it does. Um, it's effects in a cone. It's going to do damage. It's going to put a dot on them. And it's also going to take away percentage of the health. So this is also a very good ability. Um, this is going to be your main form of clear. Pretty much because shackle chains is not very good for clearing. Uh, Searing flesh is not great either for clearing the wave. But it's decent enough. And so what you want to do. You want to hit them with the shackles. Preferably three shackles. But you know. Throw out all the shackles that you can until you miss or you hit three. And then hit them with uh, Searing Flesh. Although try to use bolster defenses before you hit Searing Flesh because you won't be able to use that while you're using Searing Flesh. Just so you get the extra protections and stuff. And with that, with that combo, you hit three shackles, Searing Flesh. Well, they're, they're not going to be feeling very good. As long as you're around their level, they're going to be taking a whole lot of damage. And they're going to probably have to be the way to prevent all that damage. So this is definitely something you'll want to aim for on Squishy Gods. And this is the main thing that 
Ares has to uh, deter people from attacking your teammates. And this is the main reason why you also do not want to be behind. Because if you're behind, you're not going to be doing that much damage to them. The only appeal that you have for your team is your damage. Because they're on your teammate, and you hit them with three shackles and searing flesh, they're going to instantly turn around and run away because they do not want to be hit by that. So you need to try to stay around the enemy's level. Do not get behind with theories. If you get behind, you're pretty screwed. And then we have the ability that everyone knows. This is the ability you see all the time in Arena. Because, good God, there's always an Ares in Arena. And that's no escape. The ability that kills noobs. Because they do not know how to fight against no escape. This is the most... I've always said that Ares is probably the most powerful god against new people because they do not understand. Um, they do not know to buy beads and to cleanse no escape. Because if you get pulled in, especially in arena, and even in conquest, you get pulled in, you're probably just dead. Because they're gonna pull in your they're gonna pull you in to their team and you're just dead. And that's the main reason why Ares is awesome, is because of no escape. This is a great ultimate. It's very easily countered, but they're gonna have to buy beads early just to counter it. And this is basically means that they have to save beads for no escape, which just pretty much opens up your team to use their abilities without without fear of being beats or ageist or stuff like that. Because this is probably the biggest threat in the game as far as ultimates go, I think personally. And with that, that's going to cover Ares. Ares is a ton of fun. Um, he's pretty good. He's definitely not the best support. But if you got an aggressive team, Ares is definitely the support you'll probably want to go with. He just does a lot of damage. Just don't fall behind. You'll be good to go with Ares. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If I missed anything or have anything else to add, just let me know down in the comment section. And if there's another guy you would like to see me do next, just let me know. And I'll get on it. I hope you all have a great day. And have fun.